Christian scholars can cultivate a faith that is both intellectual and personal in several ways. I think, first of all, there's no substitute for just daily waiting before God with His Word in prayer. Now, in my life, there's been whole sections of my life when I fell into this pat phrases and routine things that just saying from memory. And I wasn't really engaging in conversation with God about the hard issues of my life. But I'm saying real prayer, real reading of the Word, feeding on it, getting it into me so that it's changing me. I mean, look at it. You know, I, I gave my life to Jesus when I was eight years old. That's nearly 60 years ago. And unfortunately, I've, I've wandered at times, and I wasn't spending enough time in the Word. I wasn't really listening to Him. As an academic, we can do this by, by submitting every part of our work to Christ. So when we're doing our research, we say, Lord, my mind is inadequate. It's way too limited for, to understand what your perspective on this would be. Please help me. Dallas Willard always talks about Jesus is the smartest man in the world. He knows more about your field than anybody else. So are you asking him for direction in your research, in your lecturing? Are you submitting your, your syllabi to him before you pass them out? Your exams, your research notes, your lecture notes. Are you really living as if he is your Lord, the Lord over your academic work? But we can also keep a faith that's both intellectual and personal by, by accountability. Uh, in my case, my wife is my accountability partner. Um, I think everybody needs to live in accountability to somebody else. So if I'm lurching off into sin or disobedience, my accountability partner has to challenge me, confront me. It, just a while back, I was getting ready to go on a, on a trip where I'd be lecturing on Christian worldview, of all things. And I'd just gotten this report about something that involved a project she and I had worked on a lot, and... I was really upset about the content of the report. I felt like it was warped. It, it was off. And I was belly aching around and saying, saying things. And she said, Daryl, you, you can't have this attitude. You, you can't do this. God calls you to, to a different attitude. And so, I mean, we're getting ready to get in the car and go to the airport. We sat down and had prayer. She prayed. I prayed. And wonderfully, God came and He touched and He lifted that, that anger, that, that bitterness, that unchristlike spirit. He lifted it then and there. But it wouldn't have happened if, if I hadn't listened to her and if she hadn't spoken and rebuked me in the name of Jesus and, and exhorted me to, to live in obedience to the Word. So intellectuals are known for their pride, for their arrogance, for their self-will. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a calling for intellectuals to, to deliberately, intentionally, daily, sometimes moment by moment, reaffirm their, their, their loyalty, their love for Jesus. Say, I'm yours at any price, at any cost, wherever you call me. I'm yours, to reaffirm that loyalty. And then you've got a, a, a marriage of this intellectual and this personal obedience. Anytime there's separation, there's, there's space for sin, and we dare not give space for that.